This is Life with Psychic Susanna on 1110 KFAB. Helping you find emotional, spiritual, and physical balance. What does your future hold? It's time to find out with Psychic Susanna. Yes, you are exactly where you need to be every Sunday night at 7.30 on KFAB. This is Life with Psychic Susanna. Uh, This is the show that will take you past your limits and push you forward in giving you supportive authors who will help us find what we need to get past our obstacles. This show is about you. Now, you can always find me at PsychicSusanna.com. You get all the... Your, the show will be going up on air on Tuesday, so you can always pass the show on to others. This is going to be an interesting show. KFAB.com. If you're in the area, that's the station you need to listen to for the latest news, weather, and traffic. It's all here at KFAB. We have an awesome, awesome news department, and our morning show guys are so much fun. So just Keep it here on eleven ten. Um, please join us on Facebook, Life with Psychic Susanna, or Susanna Stickney on Facebook and Twitter. You get some inside scoop on what's going to be on the show. Now today's show is going to be. I, I, I'm a little concerned, and I want you to be there with me and help me with this because this gentleman we're going to be interviewing has has cerebral palsy. It started when he was born in Iran, and there was 10 minutes of oxygen that uh, did not serve his, serve his brain. The reason it's troubled, because this gentleman is going to be telling us about how, when you have an obstacle in life, you don't let it hold you back. This man is going to help us understand what courage is. And I, I want you to join us, sit back, listen to the show. You know anybody else with cerebral palsy? You're going to hear something that will inspire you to go on. I don't know what your limit is, but this man had a limit from his birth and didn't let it stop him. Bravo. We all have handicaps, but this gentleman helped us help will help us to understand how to overcome it. So I would like to welcome to the show, Serena. Hello, Serena. Hello, Susanna. Great to be here. Hi, Susanna. My name is Rich Finley. I'm here with Serena, so I'll be repeating for him. He said, hi, Susanna. How are you? I heard that, Serena. I want to thank you for being on the show. It's uh, pretty interesting, the title of your book is Love Your Life and It Will Love You Back. Uh, tell me, Serena, how'd you get the title? And also, let's start with how did you get the title for this? What, 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 excuse me. I, I was like, can I that last? He said that he always had a curiosity and a passion for life. I don't know what no. No matter what, I know my life, and, um, what you get out of it. He said, and no matter what's happened to him in his life, uh, he's always loved his life, and he believes that whatever you put out in life is what you get back. Wow. I mean, that alone is inspiring, but was there ever a time when you thought of giving up? Um... No, I get, I get, I get bored really easily. He said no because he gets bored really easily. <laughs> <laughs> so you like to do it. I, I was reading on your website, which was a very cool website. Um, can you, uh, can you give me the website? Uh, the the website is loveyourlifeinc dot com. So ink is just i n c. Okay. Love loveyourlifeinc dot com. Well, I, um, Rich, I. And Serena, I picked up the day in a life, May fourteenth of uh, two thousand and eleven, and apparently on that day you decided to write the book. 
Uh, it came to you to write the book. By, by the way, also, are you still using the Xbox, or have you gone up to something else? No. No, you know, this on this paper it said that you love playing with your Xbox, I believe it was. He said. He said. Um, he's not. He's not sure about the Xbox part. Uh, Serena's. Serena's not really able to play PlayStation. PlayStation. Excuse me. No, not even that. I mean, Serena's not able to uh, play games like that, like with an Xbox or a PlayStation, that type of thing. His his uh, disability doesn't allow him to do that. Now, Serena is very much into gadgets and TV and computers and things of that nature. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was reading it from the upset on the paper, but maybe it was just misquoted wrong. Tell me, what is it? Um, I see you do a lot of speaking engagements. I, I see you do a lot of traveling. What would you say that the most important lesson you would tell the audience about about life would be, about surviving the handicap? Yeah. He said there are some times that life will come to you, but there are other times where you have to go after life, you have to chase life. I I also know one of the excerpts from Serena's book is Serena talks about a no is not the end. Right, right. So if something something occurs in your life and you feel like you're being told no, don't accept that as an end, you, you can still achieve what you want to achieve. You may just have to take a different path. Well, th- that's wonderful. The other thing that it says in his book is luck is the product of taking advantage of opportunities that present themselves to you. So tell me what opportunities were presented to you. What, 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 the, the, um, the, I he said that he was really fortunate to grow up with two loving parents. He said, but if he didn't recognize that as he was growing up, how fortunate he was to have parents like that, then all that love and support that they gave him would have been wasted. And I know personally from having worked with Serena for the last five years, I mean, we've had a lot of quote-unquote good fortune or good luck in terms of the people that we've run into, Mm -hmm. uh, whether they be, you know, uh, Pete Carroll, the former head coach from USC who helped us a lot and uh, gave us a big endorsement for Serena's book, Love Your Life and It Will Love You Back. Um, And those types of relationships, some people might look at them like, oh, you just had a fortunate meeting with somebody. But whenever Serena had a meeting like that with somebody, He's always managed to nurture that relationship and turn it into something worthwhile from a business standpoint. And he go, go after, go after. Sure, I said, and then he's really gone after those relationships and those opportunities as well, so they don't go to waste. Yeah. One of the other quotes that you have in the book that says, the path that allows you to contribute the most will open up to you in a way that allows you to love your life more fully. How do you, how do you find that path? How do you find the path that will allow you to open up more? You just focus on what you're trying to focus on what you're trying to. He said, "Just focus on what you're trying to achieve." Yeah, yeah. And then, and then I know from um, having worked with Serena for you know, five, six years, that it's all its all just trying different stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, when, I, when I didn't know what to do in my life, I was very doing, I was very efficient. Like Serena said, when he was trying to figure out what he wanted to do with his life, you're talking about after graduating college, yeah. right? Right. Serena said that um, when he was trying to figure out exactly what to do with his marketing degree and so on and so forth, um, when the job market was kind of rejecting him, he paid attention to the positive things that people were saying to him in terms of, you're so inspirational, Uh, whenever I'm having a bad day, I think of you and your positive spirit, and it helps me get through my day, 
And then Serena started to think that he could be able to inspire people on a grand scale. And, and that's what he started doing. And as we're going to take a little break, we'll be right back. I, I imagine once you dream your ideal life, which is the number one chapter, we, the second chapter is to feel the fear and then tell us what we do once we feel the fear and how do we feel the fear. This is Life with Psychic Susanna. We'll be right back with Serena and his companion, Rich, and we will be right back. This is Life with Psychic Susanna on 1110 KFAB. Psychic Susanna. Can't get through on the radio show? Call Psychic Susanna anytime at 712 712- 276-9349. That's 712-276-9349. Or visit her webpage, PsychicSusanna.com. Yes, you are right where you need to be. This is Life with Psychic Susanna on 1110 KFAB. Um, sometimes we're going to reach out in and try to interview things that will help us to go past our limits that we have. You know, please find us at 1110KFAB online. Also, Psychic Susanna, you get a free question, you get my schedule. Join me on Facebook, Life with Psychic Susanna and Susanna Stickney. If I'm not flowing really, really easy, if I'm not flowing in the show, please understand it's because of the difficulty of handling this, you know. In all honesty, we we do these pity parties ourselves, and here we're talking to someone who is not in a pity party, but embraces life and sees life's limitless possibilities through eyes that you and I don't have to have. And I want to thank you for being on the show, Serena, the author of Love Your Life and That Will Love You Back. With him is his companion, our helpmate, Rich. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having us. Uh, Serena, how, what do you, how do you, when you, you must come up a lot of fears, anything new, you, I, you must have to decide how, how you're going to approach it. So you must have fear come to you. Why do you tell us to feel the fear? He said, um, if you don't allow yourself to acknowledge the dangers in uh, a lot of situations that you may get yourself into in life, he said you could be reckless. You uh, you buy insurance? Yeah, you buy Oh, he's saying he's saying there's a lot of things that we do in our daily life. Like we we buy insurance, we put on our seatbelt. There's a lot of things that we do that, at some point or another, we have acknowledged the dangers of not doing them, and then therefore we attribute the positive aspects to doing them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He said, for instance, uh, he was always afraid and focused that he was worried that he would end up in a home for the handicapped. That mm-hmm. motivated me. And that motivated him. I like as wanting to be secure. Yeah, he said that that, motiva- that motivated him just as much as the positive motivation of wanting to be successful. So he had both going at the same time. So he's talking about in Feel the Fear in that chapter, it's about that delicate balance between not dwelling on the bad things that could happen but just acknowledging them to motivate you because there are some people in life that are motivated by success and then there are some people that are motivated by the possibility of failure. So Serena is basically just saying figure out which one you are and use that. Well, I would like to quote the quote at the end of the chapter. Again, this is a, a phenomenal book. If you have someone struggling in life, this is the book you want to get. This takes you past, uh, I mean, this is on a depth of struggling that not many of us understand. But what he says at the back of the chapter is don't even aspire to be fearless because being fearless means letting down your guard. Instead, use fear to motivate you. 
I mean, that's rather profound. Most of us want to hide from our fears, but you're telling us to allow the fear to motivate you to being better. Is that how I'm understanding this? Yeah, but when you look you you're to see that how to be for your fear. He said he said yes, you're interpreting that correctly, but he also added, but your desire for success has to be greater than your fear. Because it's not every particular. He said, because if if you don't, your fear will take over. Okay, so what we have to do is not uh, not to recognize the fear, but not let the fear control us. I this yeah. is a a powerful lesson here. Yeah. Now, less, lesson four tells us not to limit our thinking. Tell me how we go about not limiting our thinking. He said, uh, for instance, look at his situation. He could have said, you know, hey, I really would like to get in the world of motivational speaking, but I've got such a strong speech impediment, it's not something that I should pursue. But then he started thinking, well, what if I got together with somebody who could interpret for me and things of that nature. So, I mean, it, 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 make, it seems obvious. Um, yeah, now, right. yeah, it seems easy now, but back then, I mean, there's not a lot of speakers out there who have an interpreter. As a matter of fact, I don't think there's any speakers, yeah, we're, any motivational speakers we're, who have an interpreter. We're doing a team. Do you, I'm not the duo. Yeah, said we are the only professional uh, speaking duo uh, anywhere that we've seen that is um, one able-bodied person and then one disabled person. Wow. We have an average. What's that? We are the Jewish. We are, we are not the Jewish. We haven't decided about me? Which <laughs> yeah, is your honest, job in jeopardy here? Yeah, no, no, no. He said, he said, we haven't exactly decided whether I'm disabled or not. That may be true. <laughs> I think we're all disabled in some way. I think sure. one of the quotes in this chapter that I liked is that the worst thing that could happen is not getting a no. It's not trying for it at all. How does this pertain to us in our life? If you were to if you were to if you were to you say, oh, she's not going to be in the movie because you give me the Okay, Serena, Serena is saying that if you get yourself in a situation like, for instance, with dating, like that's that's something that you know a lot of yeah. us, you know, uh, deal with from time to mm -hmm. time. Uh, if you look at someone that you would like to go out with, but you already start telling yourself all the reasons that they're not going to um, want to you know, yeah. go out with you or not, and you don't end up asking, then um, you know, obviously, you're not going to get anywhere that way. But then also, I, I think. Um, at one point in the book, Serena talks about, you know, if you try for something, like say you ask somebody out and they just immediately say no, well, then it's no big deal. You move on to the next person and maybe the next person says yes. It's a numbers game. But when you don't ask people or just broadening it out, when you don't take chances in life, then you spend a lot of time sitting back and just regretting. And a lot of times we don't regret not being successful. We just regret not trying something to find out whether we would have been successful. Okay, that, that's phenomenal. Um, let's go to Chapter 5. Um, again, this book is a phenomenal motivator for anyone who has any kind of handicap, whether it's visible or not, because Serena comes to us with handicaps. Serena, you, you say in Chapter 5, use envy. Now, people tell us not to be envious of others, but people t also tell us not to be fearful, and you're telling us we can use the fear as an anchor to get forward. Then in Chapter 5, you say use e envy to ignite your passion. Tell me about that. Yeah, and we, and we should probably say envy is the only one of the seven deadly sins that we promote. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's good. <laughs> that's good. I, I'm sure everyone likes to know that one. But yeah. go, go ahead. Tell us go about go. being envious. Well, it's, you 
Shreda said that um, when he's talking of envy in his book, what he's referring to is looking at people who have have either things or a lifestyle or even just a peace of mind about life that you yourself would like to have. He said trying to emulate the things that they do, the habits that they adopt, and then in a lot of circumstances trying to mentor with them to find out exactly, hey, you've got this. I'd like to be there. How can I get there? Yes. So it's not he's not speaking of envy in a way of where you begrudge somebody their success or the things that they have or you're jealous but he's just saying it's okay to look at people who may have, you know, things that you want in life. He and talks about envy as helping him to get out of their shell. I, um... He said, like, for instance, next month he's going to fly to Arizona. Yeah, and he's going to be uh, meeting with a lot of speakers out there in Arizona, uh, and he's got some meetings set up, and he's going to be meeting with people who, in the speaking world, have been uh, a lot more successful than us, but Seren is doing it uh, to brainstorm with them and figure out ways that they have overcome certain challenges in their careers and figure out ways that, you know, we can continue to grow our brand. Wow. I, I, our time's coming to a close, and I want to go over this lesson six, which I feel, I mean, there are ten lessons here, uh, ten lessons that anyone can pick up in any stage of your life and learn from Serena how to handle your life a lot better. It's called Love Your Life, and it will love you back. Um, this uh, book is actually uh, the India Excellence Book Awards. It's the, it's the Indy Excellence Award. It's an award given to authors who self-publish. Okay. And they had 2,500 entries, and Serena won for Best Business Book of the Year. Marvelous. So this book really does, it takes us into courage, and it takes us, um, uh, it takes us farther. Let's go with, do we have time to, for one more question? Absolutely, sure. Hold on, hold on. Jim's oh. giving me, I'm going to have to break. Can you hold on with us for a little bit longer? Of course we can, sure. Uh, okay, this is Life with Psychic Susanna on 1110 KFAB. Jim tells me we have to break, but when we come back, we're going to ask Serena about let need fuel your success. We're going to ask him what he thinks about that, how he can help us explain. The show is about courage. The show is about a man who is born with cerebral palsy, lives in a wheelchair, did not go the route of others. He went his own route, and he is making life better for all of us who read his book and listen to his lectures. We will be right back. This is Life with Psychic Susanna on 1110 KFAB. Life with Psychic Susanna on 1110 KFAB. This is Life with Psychic Susanna on 1110 KFAB. Right now, we're talking courage. We're talking the courage to move forward in life no matter what your hand handicap is. And a lot of times, most people don't see our handicaps, but they do see Serena's handicap. He was born with cerebral palsy. He's been in a wheelchair, has assistance in his life, but he did not go the handicapped route. He went to a regular college. Uh, went to regular schooling. I, I mean, this is an inspiring story. So, Serena and uh, Rich, unfortunately, we don't have any more time in this seg- segment. May I hold you over till the after the 8 o'clock hour news? Sure, that's fine. Okay, so we're going to put you on hold. Uh, and I'm pushing back our other in- interview that's coming into the studio. And we're going to be talking to... Uh, to to Serena about the 10 lessons for using the power of love to succeed in life. And it's all about Serena's heart and passion for living life. It, it's inspiring. This isn't- yes, you are right where you need to be. This is Life with Psychic Susanna on 1110 KFAB. You find us here every Sunday night at 730. This is the show that will take you beyond 
the limits that you have now. It's the show that is centered around you and your life, giving you answers to questions you have and some you may not know you have. Tonight's guest, if you are uh, belong to Life with Psychic Susanna uh, on Facebook or Susanna Stickney on Facebook or Twitter, you would have known that tonight's guest is a gentleman who received, who has lived his life in a chair with cerebral palsy. Um, he has written a book called Love Your Life, and it will uh, love you back. He has uh, 10 lessons for using the power of love to succeed in life. Welcome to the show, Serena. Thank you. Yeah. He said thank you, Susanna. Okay, and welcome back, Rich. Thank you for staying on line with us. We have in the studio, by the way, Andrea Hoig, who's going to talk to us about some things coming up. But right now, that'll be after the 8.30 hour. But right now, let's go back to... Uh, to our gentleman, Serena, what do you need? What do you mean when you say, "Let need fuel your success"? We, we, we always um, he said, well, I need, but, 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 but. He said we always uh, say again. He said, more, he said we always satisfy our needs before our wants. So, so, uh, well, but, but, he said what people do is they put success on the back burner because they have to pay their bills. They have to take care of their kids. Right, they have to put food on the table, that type of thing. He said so um, people get really caught up in taking care of their needs and not pursuing their wants. So you may, if we want, 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 if we need, you want it, a party, if we want, he said, so if you make your wants a priority, then it will become he said then your wants will um, increase in importance and they will actually become needs. And then, therefore, it will be easier for you to satisfy them. Okay. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Uh, another quote from the book, if I may. The path that allows you to contribute the most will open up to you in a way that allows you to love your life fully. How has the path you've taken helped you in life? He said, well, he's just having a great time. He said he gets to help people. He gets to inspire people. He said he gets to hang out with me, which, by the way, is a lot of fun. <laughs> okay. But I, but I do know, I mean, I know I can, I can say that Serena has tried to pursue um, this career as an author and a speaker, and he's done it his way, and he's done it with a smile on his face, and he's done it with, you know, a wonderful attitude toward everybody that we've come in contact with. And I think because he's pursued it in that way, it has rubbed off on the people that we have come in contact with, whether they be people that we've spoken to or people that have read his book or people who have actually listened to radio interviews that we've done. Like, for instance, we did a radio interview a year or two ago, and there was a young girl who was listening. It was a national radio interview, much like um, this, and somebody in Detroit, Michigan, heard it, and it was an 18-year-old girl who had cerebral palsy. And she had always thought that once she got done with high school, that was going to be it, and then she heard Serena's story, and she was so inspired, and she went and talked to her parents, and she actually ended up enrolling in college because she heard Serena's story and was so inspired. Wonderful, wonderful. So, so, that, I think, so, so I think in answer to your question, I'm sorry for interrupting you, but mm -hmm. I think in answer to your question, just Serena's attitude and the way that he's pursued what he's wanted to do, I think that's become infectious for people, and that's why so many people have really taken to his message because it's coming from such an earnest place. Well, there, there's just one thing, and I hope you, you forgive me if I delve into a, 
a place that might be uncomfortable, Serena? Is that okay? He said, he said, sure, go ahead. Okay. A lot of, a lot of my clients who come see me in my appearances, a lot of them sometimes you can see them in a pity party. You can see them in a pity party is only can have one person in there and you can have a big party. Um, and I, I work very hard on working with the attitude of gratitude, helping people to see their blessings in every day. I, I want to ask you how, Serena, being in a wheelchair, having someone having to be with you with everything you do, how is it you stay out of the pity party? I have people over every day. Say again? I have people over every day. Serena said that, um, well, quite frankly, he actually does have a little bit of a pity party every day. I mean, one thing that he talks about in his book is his book isn't, um, and as you know, I mean, you've read it. Right. His, his book isn't this ongoing rah-rah kind of book. I mean, Serena really allows for the reader to have bad days. You know, just as well as you're going to have good days. But Serena says that's okay, that's healthy. So Serena definitely does have his bad days. And then, uh, what are you going to, what are you going to, what are you going to, uh, what are you going to do? Uh, uh, Serena says the important thing is what are you going to do after you have that pity party? Okay. Yeah. Help me understand that, Serena. Oh, Serena. I, 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 you see me, I, I, he said, okay, for instance, it takes him about an hour and a half every day to shave and shower uh, uh, and I, get ready in the morning. I, 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 and he said that he hates that. He can't stand that it takes him so long. Well, well, when I get over to then, okay, then over, what do we do to this? Oh, then, um, then, he said once once he gets over that initial frustration, he just focuses on, okay, what am I going to do for the rest of the day? So in other words, no matter you know how well Serena's book does or how well we do speaking-wise, that type of thing, the logistics of the day are still the same. It still takes Serena about an hour and a half every day to get ready. And even though that's frustrating to him on a daily basis, once he gets past that frustration, he just focuses on the positive, like, okay, I'm putting this much time and effort and energy into getting ready because it's what I have to do to then go and do the things that I love to do, which are write, which are go make speaking appearances, things of that nature. So he just focuses on the reason why he's making the sacrifice as opposed to living in the pity party of the sacrifice he's having to make. Wonderful, wonderful. Serena, if I can just give you a little sidebar thing, honey. Thank God you're not a woman. We take an hour and a half in the mornings all the time. <laughs> you know, and we love it, though. We love that self that self time where we take for ourselves. Again, I want to thank you both for being here. Please uh, tell me, Rich and Serena, how, how do we get a hold of you? Again, the book is called Love Your Life, and it will love you back. It is the uh, winner of uh, Excellence Winner for, tell me about the award again. Well, it, it won the Indie Excellence Award for Best Business Book of the Year, but we entered it in the business category because we speak at a lot of different businesses and conferences, that type of thing. But it's not solely a business book. I mean, the, the metaphors in the book can apply to whatever venture you're trying to do in life, whether you're trying to be successful at business or whether you're trying to be successful at a relationship or with your family or weight loss. I mean, whatever the issue may be that you're struggling with. Serena talks about his... Uh, ongoing journey with his disability, and he tells it in such a way that the reader can put their own disability in as a metaphor for Serena's disability, and they can find ways to be inspired and achieve success that way. So we want to make sure that anybody that wants to get a copy of the book can. You can go to our website, which again is www.loveyourlifeinc. That's I-N-C, loveyourlifeinc.com. And there's links there. You can see footage of Serena and I giving speaking engagements. You can order the book there. There's also an email link there that you can get in touch with us. There's links to our Facebook and Twitter and all kinds of things like that. Yeah, so. and, uh, 
Um, there, there you go. And Serena has a newsletter that you can sign up for. So you can get the newsletter, you can get the updates whenever Serena does a new blog, uh, that type of thing. So everything that you need is at loveyourlifeinc.com. Thank you very much for being with us. Please make it a great evening, and thank you for the inspiring message. This is Life with Psychic Susanna on 1110 KFAB. We will be right back taking your calls at 1-800-543-1110 or 558-1110. This is Life with Psychic Susanna, the only place you want to be on Sunday night at 730.